Who? What are you doing? Where's Nathan Abbey? Okay, stop. Stand still. Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to the worst, second worst marathon ever. The worst second worst. That's probably uh, a good title for it. So this is going to be the worst episode of the second worst marathon ever, or maybe this is there's lots of second worst marathons out there, and this is the worst of the second worst. That's bad, <laughs> but not as bad as being the best worst marathon ever. Okay, yeah, that's right. We've topped that one. So uh, we're on to the next rule of Pixar here: storytelling. The rule is oh. Going to the wrong place. Never find it. Never. <laughs> the rule is if you were your character in this situation, how would you feel? Honesty lets, lends credibility to unbelievable situations. Okay. I mean, that goes hand in hand with the last one. But I, you notice that they said. They didn't say, if you were this character, what would you do? How would you react? It was, how would you feel? Right. And that's got to be for a reason. You know, the, the, the emotion, once again. So that, that lends credibility to these unbelievable situations. Yeah, just by having somebody react uh, honestly to them makes your character seem more real and I, that is I think one of the, those main things you know the more real your character feels generally the better your story is seen to be and there are some stories that have nothing hardly t to go on in the story department but people still think they're great because of how real and in-depth and well drawn up characters were in the in the story um, and that's also one of those things that, you know, in modern day storytelling, uh, character driven stories are what people are really after. Um, times past, you know, describing a interesting place was good enough sometimes to be a story, you know, it's just... I don't know, Gulliver goes to the Lilyfoot or whatever, and you see what it's like there, and it's almost just some political allegory or whatever. But for the most part, those kind of things are past. Uh, you don't get a story like The Lord of the Rings where the characters are pretty sparse, but it's all about the setting. Instead, you get uh, character-driven stories. And so, if you want to impress folks, if you want people to like your story, your characters need to be more than just one-dimensional people. So yeah, putting yourself in that place and, and really looking inside yourself and understanding how you would react and being honest about it makes it seem more real, I guess. the full quote again, if you don't mind. Okay. You still have access, right? Uh, well, I... I, I it's didn't. on the phone. Yeah, I didn't have access at the cabin, but we had all the rules, so we're fine. Uh, if you were your character in this situation, how would you feel? Honesty lends credibility to unbelievable situations. Okay, so that time, honesty is the word I want to look at. Honesty lends credibility to unbelievable situations. I'm drawing from my own experience. There are many times when I am unheroic or I am uncool or I'm surrounded by tons of people and I feel alone or, you know, these, these things that aren't attractive feelings. They aren't macho. They aren't heroic. They're not the kind of things that you want your characters to have adventures with. But if you're honest about it, maybe that speaks to people. My my grandmother died in, in 1996 and I was at her funeral and there were all these people sad and crying and remembering her. And 
and saying, you know, it's such a shame that she's gone. And, and I thought, I don't feel bad for grandma. I feel bad for me. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, I would never dare say that to anybody. What an awful thought. I'm a bad person for having thought that. Uh-huh. And here it is all these years later, I guess nearly 20 years later, and I still think about that, that I felt sorry for me at that funeral. So, you know, I, I never, never used it in a story, but it, it's there. I, I ought to use it at some point. Whereas yeah. like somebody was killed and, oh gosh, what a shame, you know, and, 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 and it's terrible. And this guy's life has been cut short and I feel sorry for me. Well, I, I think that's... When at the heart of it, that's what everybody is crying about at a funeral. They're not, especially when it's your grandma or something, because they tend to be older. They've had all sorts of infirmities and all sorts of problems. And death almost always comes, you know, it really often comes welcome a thing for this person. They're put out of their misery almost. But then there's us who are left behind who now have that empty space. And so we're the ones that are sad because we will miss them. They won't be there for us. Uh, they themselves, they're gone and they're not gonna feel that same thing. Um, so I don't think it's, <laughs> it's just being honest, I guess, uh, like you were saying about that. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking of a, of a moment from a Pixar movie, an odd, you know, a, a incredible situation or whatever it was that she said in the rule. Uh, I think of the situation where Woody and Buzz are in the van, they get in a fight, they fall out of the van, they're on the ground, and then the mom's like, yay, we made it, we're all filled up with gas, next stop, Pizza Planet, and they drive away. And Woody and Buzz are standing there in the gas station, and what does Woody do? What is his reaction to that? Um, it's a really unusual situation, and he goes, "What? Well, can't they see that I'm not there? Don't they know that I'm missing? And then he freaks out, because I'm a lost toy, and he starts crying. Uh, I think at this point, and obviously, maybe this is not what the person themselves would feel, but they're really looking at their character. And at this point, Woody was still pretty dang selfish. Uh, he wanted to be that number one toy. And so the first thing he thinks is, oh, don't they not see me? Do you know who I am? Uh, kind of a thing. And then he starts to mourn, not that Andy has gone, but that he is a lost toy the situation that he is in uh i don't know maybe that's an example of that um it's hard to say what's a lot of these rules as we've said you, you can't know without having some pre-production knowledge of the uh, thing but it seems like maybe it would be a decent example well okay the the, the example that i used an episode or two back of sully that moment where I was just like, oh, I'm never going to see, what's her name? Uh, Schmutzy Poo, I don't know. It's, it was it like was, Celia or something. Uh, yeah, like, Celia. I'm never going to see Celia again. Don't you care about that? And he doesn't. He says, none of that matters now. No, no, none of that matters. No, none of that matters. It's such, it's an ugly scene. I, or to me, it's an ugly scene. And fuck anybody who disagrees. And, and, and guess what? That's my honest opinion. And so, hey. Lynn's believability. To a, yeah, and, 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 and what kind of situation was it? Yeah, an incredible situation. To an incredible situation. And, but that, but that's, an, that's his honest feeling at that moment. The, 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 the writer, if I were at that moment, that my character, what would I feel? And he feels like none of that matters. All that matters is Boo is in the hands of our, of my enemies, of the people, of our boss who we thought we could trust and turned out to be bad. And, and you know what I mean? And Boo is in danger. So your feelings don't matter. And it, 
probably adds an authenticity to that scene as well. It, you know, helps them, us to know that Sully's going to do anything he can to get back there and save her. In spite of all the rules that say you can't, you're, you're exiled. Monster, you cannot interact with the human world. Yeah. That's a, another good example, I think, of that rule. So, there you go. Rule number, what was it, 15? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back again tomorrow with another rule for you. And, uh, yeah, I've been Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening. Good night. At the Dune Steve, we pay our authors as well as our own bills for the website maintenance and the like, so if you're ever in a generous mood, or even if you're not, we'd love it if you donate. Just press the button on the website to donate $5 a month, a quarter, or choose your own one-time donation amount.